Hello friends and welcome to the Lovely Place channel. Today we're going to unbox the Kurt Geiger small party bag. We'll be finding out all about the Kurt Geiger and Carvella brand, looking at the quality of the item, its plus and minus points, and most importantly the best way to hunt down your own bag and to care for it once you have it. So let's get started. Here's the disclaimer. I don't work for Kurt Geiger. I wasn't given this bag and asked to promote it. I bought it with my own money and I'm posting this review of my own personal impressions because I think it's important that if you're going to invest in an expensive luxury item, you should know all about it and not just the spin the company wants you to hear. I think you might identify with me that I was actually shopping for a pair of black ankle boots with a heel and somehow ended up with a gorgeous sparkly bag as well. That's how gorgeous this handbag is. I was in Kurt Geiger in Liverpool trying on a pair of black ankle boots when the bag beckoned me from across the room. I was like a moth caught in the flame. I had to drop the shoes and get across the floor to the bag before anyone else could get to it. I'm trying to find a reason in my mind why I need a bag like this. My husband is asking me when I'll ever have an opportunity to use a bag like this and I'm suddenly forced to get really creative and actually think about what my life is like and how I want it to be. I mean, it's a fair question. This bag is so pretty and sparkly. When will I ever get to use it in my life? Yes, I could just wear it round the house when I'm washing up or put it in a frame and mount it on a wall. Now there's an idea. But that's not what it's for. This bag is for going out and being seen and admired, and rightly so. It's a thing of beauty. Please excuse the wrinkly, grubby hands in this film. They're mine. As you can see, we're sort of doing the unboxing back to front. I bought the bag. The unboxing comes at the end of the film. So, the Kurt Geiger brand is apparently the number one premium footwear brand in the UK first opening its doors in London in 1963. Kurt Geiger, the person, was born in 1915 in Vienna. He worked for the family drapery business and studied medicine at the University of Vienna and he died in 1972. I had no idea that the Carvella brand is part of Kurt Geiger, but that does explain that the black boots I bought from the Kurt Geiger store the same time as the bag have Carvella written inside. The internet does state that Kurt Geiger is a luxury brand. Celebrities like Jennifer Lopez and Julia Roberts can be seen wearing this brand. But don't let that put you off. They probably didn't pay for them and they were just asked to be seen wearing them. The bird head, I actually thought it was a sparrow, but apparently it's a eagle, is to symbolise strength, courage and endurance, apparently. Not sure why eagles are strong. I'd have thought a chimpanzee or gorilla would probably win against an eagle in a fight, but maybe this is a special sort of eagle. I'd maybe have a lioness as more courageous than an eagle, and I would certainly say tortoises probably have more endurance than eagles, but what would I know? The Kurt Geiger brand stance is kindness. They say they harbour a passion for purpose, looking beyond fashion to make a kind impact on the world. Um, I'm not really sure what to say about that or how my bag is kind. Or maybe I do. Let me explain. How to buy a Kurt Geiger bag, step one. Pick a quiet day, preferably after the sales in January or February, preferably a Monday or Tuesday when sales in the store are likely to be low and the shop assistants bored and wondering if they will ever get to make their commission. I actually have no idea if retail assistants get commissions, but I somehow imagine they do. You are doing this so you and they can enjoy the shopping experience, as that's a lot of the reason we buy things, to enjoy the whole process. Bear in mind that you don't want to mess the shop assistants around. Don't be picking the stuff up and putting it down if you have absolutely no intention of buying, because that's really annoying. Step two, 
Be nice to the shop assistant. They stand around all day having to look smart, pleasant and stylish and it's hard work and no good if you have varicose veins or are prone to fainting. Talk to the shop assistant, ask them about the product and give them a chance to shine. There's every chance that someone else who's probably in the shop would like to know all the questions you're going to ask. In my case, this friendliness meant the shop assistant was able to tell me my bag comes in different colours, which I didn't know at the time, but I still picked the colour that I picked. Step three, if you have decided to commit to buying the bag in your mind, then take a look around the shop and see if there's anything else you might need. There's nothing better than making multiple purchases in one go because, step four, this is where you can legitimately ask for a discount. It makes sense to everyone that if you're buying more than one thing, there might be some money off. In this case, it didn't quite work, but it did spark the assistants to remember step number five. Just because they can't give you a discount on the bag and the shoes are already half price in the sale, what they can do is, how about you use your daughter's student discount on the bag? 10% off. What a bonus. Of course you're going to buy the bag in the shop now rather than go online. But it doesn't end there. That lovely, friendly relationship you've built up with the assistant prompts them to remember to put it in the gift box. How cool is that? And because you've bought two items, they both come in two gorgeous Kurt Geiger paper shopping bags. And now you're starting to feel just like Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman rather than a tired, wrinkled, old working mother of two. But it doesn't end there. Don't rush to make the purchase. And all of a sudden, the shop assistant remembers that student discount is 10%, but... NHS discount is 20%. That has just generated a whole £33.80 off the bag. And that, my friends, is how to get yourself a gorgeous Kurt Geiger gift-wrapped bag for a bargain price. Don't worry if you don't work for the NHS. Just make friends with someone who does. Take them on your shopping trip and buy them a thank you cup of coffee or cheeky Prosecco afterwards. So, with a brand new sparkly bag and a pair of new shoes, it seemed criminal not to get a last minute hair wash and blow dry for the planned meal out that very evening. Which is why the unboxing video at the end of this video is so rushed. It was done in the hotel room just before we went out. I had my very first reason to use the bag and I'm going to use it again next month when a whole gang of us are celebrating friend's birthday. The fact that all my friends adore handbags is going to make this outing extra special for me. Now, before I go, here's one last tip I use when buying anything expensive, fancy and frivolous. I remind myself that it is not to be saved for a special occasion. These things are probably the most expensive luxury items you will buy and therefore you must use them. What I like to do is keep my special things in the gift boxes that they come in and then write on a piece of paper that I keep in the box each time I actually get them out and use them and what the occasion was for. Just to remind myself that I didn't waste money on something I will never use. And now for one very, very last thing. This bag does come with its own disclaimer, and rightly so. Each diamante is mounted in its own claw, and those claws catch on anything and everything. So use this bag with care. If you lose even one of the jewels, the bag will never be the same. Although, as you'll be mostly wearing it over your shoulder and you do happen to lose a jewel, you could maybe take one from the back to replace any lost from the front. And finally, I hope you can see from the photos, it's a really practical size. The strap is just long enough to tuck comfortably under your arm. The inside leather is gorgeously soft and supple and not black, so you can hopefully see things inside easily. I've been the proud owner of this bag for four days now and don't regret it at all, although I may do when I get my credit card bill. So, thanks for watching to the end of my video. I hope this helped you on your fashion journey and bye for now.
Yeah. Right, go Unfortunately, they're going to see my crabby hands instead of yours. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Now, I need to look at the battery. Inside a lead acid battery, there are loads of plates of lead surrounded by a whole load of sulfuric acid. Now, over time, its natural cycle, unfortunately, you get these sulfate crystals forming, which start to cause little shorts. And so you end up with a dead mm -hmm. battery, which is exactly what we've got here. As a result, this out of the battery mm -hmm. in with the new one. Now I can turn the engine on the starter motor, making right, sure move, it's move, right around bring the it, Bring it down in front the of, yeah, there we go. So I've removed the main lead to the coil and disconnected the fuel pump to avoid yeah. any risk of fire from a stray spark. Now this is the first time this engine has been cranked over in 17 years. I hope it didn't start on this occasion. Do I have to take this off now? No, should I stop the film? Wait. Keep rolling. Yeah. Yep. And it makes sense to fit a new condenser, rotor arm, new HT leads, and a new distributor cap. So we're yeah. now replacing the main engine assembly, except for the spark plug. But while they're still out, it would be easier to spin their engine over, so I'm just going to spin it up and try to get some oil pressure. We've got a light, so once the light is gone, then we've got a bit of oil pressure. So there we Lay go. it back down. The oil is quite thick, but it's cold. Yeah, let's lay it back down. Lay it back down into the box, lay it in the box, yeah. Like that. Okay, now shut it. So we should be pretty much ready to go.